Hello, I'm Spencer Owen and this is The Rail. Welcome to episode three of the football show that talks about the things that matter to you, the fans. Now we asked you to tell us what's important to you guys and one of the things that keeps coming up is the cost of football, in particular ticket prices. And you're right to be concerned because the TV money is rolling in, the clubs they're getting richer and richer, but yet the average ticket price of English football is still on the increase and that doesn't seem fair. That's why this week we've been to visit one of the clubs that's bucking the trend and doing things the right way. We've been to see the Football Supporters Federation to find out more about what fans can do to fight back. And we went to the Supporters Direct Summit to see what else is going on in the world of fan rights. First up, I went to Bradford. I'm here at Valley Parade, home of Phil Parkinson's Bradford City, who last season were one of the feel-good stories. They beat Premier League champions Chelsea 4-2 in the FA Cup at Stamford Bridge and went all the way to the quarter-finals in the process. Ahead of the new season, they're looking to build their fan base and they're leading the fight against rising ticket prices in England. Let's go find out more. We're trying to make football affordable and accessible for people of Bradford and West Yorkshire. We thought after our fantastic FA Cup run last year, almost getting promoted from League One, perhaps it was the time to increase our season ticket prices. They were 199 last year, but we thought to ourselves, we've got a 24,000 fantastic, almost Premier League stadium here. Yeah. But we're getting 13 or 14,000 every week, which is phenomenal, don't get me wrong, for League One. So instead of increasing the prices, we dropped it to £149 for, for an adult and threw in the fact that if they bring a child under 11, that child can come for free. We wanted to make football affordable, accessible to the fans that got us back to where we are now. When there's been a full house or close to it, the atmosphere has been tremendous. Money can be tight for families, especially with, 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 with kids. And uh, you know, we want the next generation of uh, Bradford supporters to, to come here. 23 games works out at £6.47 a game. Oh. And it was as simple as that. We've got Neil here who's about to renew his season ticket here at the uh, Bradford City Stadium. Neil, how long have you had one? Since 1958. Tell me what you think about this whole 149 thing, like making the season tickets cheaper, hopefully you're going to get a lot more fans in there next season. Oh, I think it's incredible yeah. yeah, for the support and the, the atmosphere it will generate in the ground, it's brilliant. What do you think that other clubs should be doing stuff like this, you know, making it more accessible for well, people? That... It's up to each club, but yeah. you know, at the end of the day, the game is about the supporters. Yeah. And if the supporters can't afford to go to the games, then the game will just die. Your target, I believe, for this, this kind of campaign, the 149 campaign, was to get 15,000. How are you getting on with that? We smashed it this week. To get to the 15, 16,000 mark as we stand it is, is terrific. Really? 17 and 17 and a half is the new target. We opened the stadium to new fans to say, come and sit in your seat. And we interviewed a couple of them. A Scottish chap in his 60s, Celtic fan. He said, I'm not changing allegiance, but he said, I go to the pub every week. I watch Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, etc. I spend £10, which is three pints, and watch the game. But for £149, it's cheaper than going to the pub. He watches live football, he's supporting the club that he lives in. This is exactly what we want. We're not saying give up on your team, yeah. but we're saying support our team at this level. And you never know, his grandson might become a Bradford City fan. Do you think that we'll see a lot of other clubs trying to emulate it next season? You know, the, the game is, a, is about the working class. Um, English public and that's what it always has been. I'd like to see that it's kept affordable um, so people can, can bring the kids along to football games because in the culture in this country, you know, football is so important. It sounds very grandiose to say that we're trying to change football but we firmly believe if we do our bit, you know, it will have a knock-on effect. If we know that we're doing right by our own fans, other clubs will look at it, maybe put pressure on their clubs to say, come on, our stadium's empty every week and you're charging us £400, £500, £600, times that by two adults and two kids. It, it then becomes not affordable, at, not just at the top level, but at every level. Now, since being there, Bradford have actually smashed the 18,000 season ticket sales figure. That's a record for third tier football in England. So kudos to them, Bradford, definitely doing things the right way in terms of ticket prices. Swansea are also leading the way in the Premier League. They've just capped away ticket prices at £22 for the upcoming season. Unfortunately, not every other club are following suit. 
Now I've come to Sunderland to meet with the Football Supporters Federation. Now the FSF are a democratic organisation campaigning on behalf of football supporters in England and Wales. So naturally, ticket prices are right at the top of their agenda. Right, I'm here with David from the Football Supporters Federation. David, first off, just tell us a little bit more about what you guys do. We're a national organisation for football fans, uh, a bit like a a union for fans if you like and we campaign on things like ticket prices, areas around diversity, pro-diversity. Then ticket prices is what we're concentrating on today's episode of The Rail. So tell us some of the stuff you might, you guys have got involved in. Probably the highest profile thing that we've been involved in has been the 20s Plenty campaign where we're calling for all tickets for all away fans to be capped at £20. A lot of people will obviously want uh, things like this and campaigns like this to get more me momentum as clubs get more money. The latest TV deal, uh, the domestic rights, was £5.14 billion. What we're hoping to see is a, a much bigger slice of that for fans. What are the things that you guys can actually do to make that progress happen? At the minute, we are talking to lots of different fans groups about continuing to push the 20s plenty message, mm -hmm. uh, not just in the Premier League, but throughout the Football League, now is the time for fans to put pressure on their clubs. The other thing that they can do is to encourage their clubs to enter into reciprocal deals with other clubs. This is when the clubs will agree a reduced amount to charge each other's fans. And I think we're up to somewhere in the region of £700,000 that we've saved fans through encouraging the reciprocal deals. We'd like to see a lot more of that, but it does need fans to get in touch with their club, encourage them now to speak to other clubs, because now's the time to do it before the season starts. What is the best way for fans, maybe at home, that want to do these things you're, you're, you're suggesting? Firing emails off never hurts. Um, we would suggest they always push the support of liaison officer as the first point of uh, contact at the club. The one thing that the FSF can do is help fans to word letters, and we can also put them in touch with other fans groups, which is vital. So Dave, we often talk about the clubs that are doing things you know, the right way. Swansea charging £22 for away tickets is great. But then we've also got newly promoted Norwich doing £45 for an away ticket. How do you feel about that? What's their justification for it? I don't think there is any justification for it and uh, hats off to, to Swansea for showing the way at the £22 tickets. Speaking of Norwich as well, because they've came straight back up, there is a reported £24 million parachute payment that is to be accounted for. We had confirmation that that is actually distributed amongst the Premier League clubs. Quite conveniently, um, it's about the same amount that it would take to make every ticket £20. So we're in the middle of an hour of uh, whipping up a storm and encouraging clubs to, to share that unexpected windfall. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Sheffield Wednesday. They've been in the news recently charging up to £50 for a ticket at their games. Their fans aren't happy, there's a petition. Again, crazy prices uh, even outside of the Premier League um, and it's really encouraging to see fans protesting against this. Everybody now realises that you know you can take a step back and uh, look at your own club as well as others and get beyond this uh, sometimes petty tribalism so fans can work together. Because together they're much stronger in battling these, these crazy ticket prices. And what's your view on, on other countries? We know that countries like Germany, tickets are drastically cheaper, often for the, the bigger teams, the likes of Bayern Munich. I think we can always learn things from, from activism uh, in other countries. But I think we've got up ahead of steam now. Yeah. Um, I think the 20s Plenty brand, if you can call it that, is out there prominently. And I think because we're getting those little wins now, it's not so often these days that I hear there is no point. So we're paying over £30 for a football match, uh, any football match, let alone one outside of the top flight, is absolutely crackers. Um, we've got to put a stop to fans, we've got to keep fighting against this. Thanks very much for your time, David. Best of luck with uh, 20s Plenty and all the other stuff the FSF are up to. Thank you very much. The FSF have a Share TV Wealth campaign which you can get involved in by clicking the link on the screen and you'll be supporting not only the lowering of ticket prices but also the redistribution of TV wealth. Now then, finally, the FSF actually co-hosted a summit with Supporters Direct this past weekend. It was a free event which saw football fans get together to debate some of the important issues in football, of course, including ticket prices. The ticket price issue is, is, is a massive issue for fans. We're an integral part of the game. We go week in and week out. And the problem with football fans is because we are tied to our club, we love our club, it's difficult for us to boycott if, if things don't go quite right. People have accepted it for what reason? So it's the su supply and demand principle. People will keep buying. If you refuse to buy, someone will come along, particularly at the big clubs, and someone will come along and take your ticket. 
I think there's going to be a downturn. I think prices are going to have to come down over the next couple of years to a respectable level. The supporters trusts are good working with their clubs individually but collectively it's much more effective and we can push for uh, reciprocal agreements with other clubs and then hopefully expand that right across the league in the years to come. Any Swans fan travelling to an away match will pay a maximum of £22 and now the club will subsidise the rest of the cost. Ticket prices in Scotland certainly I think are too high. Still the majority of money for clubs comes from ticket money. The money we get for TV has gone down and down and down in recent years. You know, as somebody once said, you know, football is nothing without supporters. It's just 22 men running around a big field. That's it for the rail this week. As always, we want to hear from you guys with the football stories that are happening in your area. So leave us a comment below with them. Also, what is your club doing to combat ticket prices? Let us know. Make sure you subscribe to Copper Knightley to see next week's episode first. I'll see you then.